Hello everyone welcome back to my channel Iraqi Dinar Digest, Militia Man, a newshound guru, commented on the recent pressures faced by Alak, the governor of the Central Bank of Iraq. Alak has been under scrutiny for various issues, which even led to an unannounced meeting in Washington months ago. This meeting, which was not made public at the time, is believed to have addressed critical concerns. Militiaman views the ongoing pressure as a positive development, suggesting that it may be part of a broader agenda, as evidenced by members of parliament actively calling out Alec. He believes that this pressure could lead to significant changes in Iraq's financial landscape. Intel guru Frank 26 shared a report from an Iraqi source, Firefly, mentioning that K2, a reputable insurance company specializing in risk management for banks, is involved in discussions about the process of removing zeros from the Iraqi currency. Frank 26 interprets this involvement as significant, suggesting that the timing of K2's engagement with this topic indicates that the long-discussed plan to lift the three zeros as part of Iraq's currency reinstatement is progressing. He emphasizes that the fact an insurance company is discussing this process hints at its imminent implementation making it an important development in Iraq's financial sector. Newshound guru Samson highlighted that Iraq has significantly increased its gold reserves, now exceeding 148 tons, according to a recent announcement by the World Gold Council. This move is part of Iraq's ongoing efforts to strengthen its financial stability and diversify its assets. Increasing gold holdings is often seen as a way to bolster economic security, especially in times of global uncertainty, and indicates Iraq's commitment to enhancing its monetary reserves. This development is a positive sign for the country's economic resilience and long-term financial strategy. Guest Dr. Jan Halpahez addressed the frustration some people feel about the slow progress of the financial revaluation, particularly in Iraq. She explained that setbacks, such as those described by Murphy's Law, are a natural part of the process. Recently, documents intended to become law in Iraq were sent to a committee, but some unauthorized changes were made, which were later caught by the final decision-making group. As a result, the process had to start over. Dr. Halpahez emphasized that while these delays are frustrating, they are part of the journey. Once Iraq resolves these issues, they can rejoin the financial markets allowing their currency to be traded internationally. Newshound Guru Brittling discussed the growing concerns regarding Iraq's financial ties with Iran, particularly how Iraq is being influenced by Iran and allowing its financial institutions to be used for money laundering to support certain groups. Brittling warns that the US will likely impose consequences on Iraq for these actions, signaling a potential turning point in Iraq's economic and political relationships. While he believes Iraq has the ability to change course, Brittling remains uncertain about the outcome, expressing a neutral stance on how the situation will unfold. He emphasizes the seriousness of the situation, urging Iraq to take decisive action. Newshound Guru Claire highlighted an article reporting that the U.S. Treasury Department, through its Office of Foreign Assets Control, OFAC, has placed Kamiz Al Kanjar the head of Iraq's sovereignty party, on its sanctions list. This designation means that al Kanjar, along with any entities associated with him, is now prohibited from engaging in financial transactions with U.S. individuals or entities. The move signals a strong stance by the U.S. against individuals it deems to be involved in activities contrary to its interests or in violation of international norms further complicating Iraq's political landscape. 